In the shadows of toxic mine waste, deep in the layers of contaminated soil, life finds a way. Not life as we usually imagine it. No plants, no animals, but microbes. Among these, a few remarkable bacteria do something no other life forms can. They transform toxic, dissolved gold compounds into solid, pure gold. This isn't legend. It's not mythology. It's a meticulously documented biochemical process, one that scientists have observed under the microscope, broken down in the lab, and reconstructed step by step. Today, we're going to examine that process in full detail, how bacteria digest deadly gold complexes and produce real, metallic gold. No future predictions, no speculation, just the astonishing truth of how life turns poison into treasure. Let's start with a basic fact. Gold in nature doesn't always appear as solid nuggets. In many environments, especially around hydrothermal vents or mining sites, gold exists in a dissolved ionic form, typically as gold-3 chloride. In this state, gold is highly toxic to living organisms. Gold ions interact with thiol groups in proteins, disrupt enzyme functions, and damage cell membranes. They're so reactive that few life forms can tolerate their presence. But in places where gold is abundant, certain bacteria have evolved biochemical strategies to neutralize this threat, not by avoiding gold, but by transforming it. One of the best studied organisms that does this is Cupria vitis metallogurans. Cupria vitis metallogurans is a gram-negative bacterium that thrives in environments contaminated with heavy metals. It's a microbial survivalist, loaded with genetic tools for detoxifying cadmium, mercury, copper, zinc, and gold. What's unique about this bacterium is that when exposed to gold denoise, chloride, it doesn't just resist the metal, it reduces it, chemically converting it from its toxic ionic form into elemental gold, or AU0. This process unfolds in multiple, tightly controlled steps within the bacterial cell and its surrounding membrane structures. Let's walk through it, step by step. When gold dethrae ions enter the environment of C, metallodurans, the first point of interaction is the outer membrane of the cell. Because gold ions resemble copper ions in charge and coordination, the bacterium's metal sensing and transport systems respond as if dealing with copper stress. This activates the COP, copper resistance, gene cluster, especially the proteins COP A and COP B, which detect and begin pumping excess metal ions out of the cell. However, a small number of gold ions manage to enter the periplasmic space, the area between the outer and inner membranes. This is where the bacterium must make a critical decision, neutralize or die. Within the periplasm, C. metallodurans launches its most important defense, reduction. The bacterium produces NADH-dependent reductases, enzymes that donate electrons to the gold-3 ions, converting them to elemental gold, AU0. Here's the biochemical reaction in simplified form. Gold ion with a 3-plus charge gains 3 electrons to become neutral gold. The electrons come from cellular cofactors, like NADH or NADPH, which are part of the bacterium's metabolic energy systems. This transformation is essential because elemental gold is chemically inert and non-toxic. The bacterium essentially deactivates the metal, neutralizing its threat. In some strains, glutathione and flavoproteins also assist in the reduction by stabilizing intermediate gold complexes during electron transfer. Once gold ions are reduced to elemental atoms, something else begins to happen. Those atoms don't stay alone. They start clustering. Due to high surface energy, reduced gold atoms spontaneously gather into nucleation sites, often on the outer membrane or in the periplasm. 
These clusters grow into nanoparticles, tiny crystalline structures of gold, often around 10 to 50 nanometers in size. Electron microscopy has revealed these particles as bright deposits adhering to the cell wall, often forming regular shapes like hexagons or spheres. Over time, these nanocrystals can aggregate further, sometimes even forming visible flakes. Importantly, the bacteria aren't doing this to generate. This is a detoxification strategy. They're turning poison into inert material and shoving it out of their way. Now that the gold particles are forming, the bacteria must deal with them. Some species accumulate the gold in their membranes, embedding it into the lipid bilayer or anchoring it with proteins and polysaccharides. Others excrete the particles into the surrounding environment, often through vesicle-like structures or passive shedding. In either case, the result is the same. Elemental gold is immobilized and separated from the cell's sensitive internal machinery. In biofilms, dense communities of bacteria, this effect is amplified. Entire mats of bacteria can trap, reduce, and mineralize gold within their extracellular matrix. This leads to the gradual buildup of gold particles in the environment, sometimes even forming placer deposits in nature. While C. metalladurans reduces gold inside the periplasm, Delftia acidivorans takes a different approach, extracellular reduction. This bacterium doesn't let gold ions enter at all. Instead, it secretes a small peptide called delftibactin, which binds to gold the three ions outside the cell and reduces them before entry. This is a safer strategy. By neutralizing the metal externally, Delftia avoids internal exposure entirely. Here's what happens. 1. Delftibactin binds to gold ions, forming a stable complex. 2. The complex undergoes reduction, possibly aided by nearby redox active enzymes. 3. Gold atoms nucleate directly in the extracellular matrix. 4. Nanoparticles accumulate on the bacterial surface or in the surrounding slime layer. This process not only protects the cell, but also allows the formation of gold crystals entirely outside the organism. During gold reduction, bacteria often generate reactive oxygen species, ROS, as metabolic byproducts. To survive this stress, they activate superoxide dismutase catalase, glutathione peroxidase. These enzymes detoxify ROS and prevent oxidative damage to the cell during metal reduction. In some cases, bacteria also produce hydrogen sulfide, H2S, from sulfur metabolism. This compound can react with gold ions to form gold sulfide, an intermediate that then decomposes into metallic gold. Thus, sulfur metabolism indirectly supports the reduction process. So, what have we seen? A bacterium encounters a deadly gold compound. It responds not by fleeing, but by transforming the threat through detection, enzymatic reduction, nanoparticle nucleation, and excretion. It removes the toxin and leaves behind pure elemental gold. This process, though microscopic, mirrors the logic of survival Transform what can kill you into something harmless, something stable, something inert, and in this case, something precious. The ability of bacteria, like Cupria vitis metallodurans and Delftia acidovarans to produce gold is not magic. It's molecular resilience, written in the language of enzymes, cofactors, and membranes. A survival story, in shimmering detail, Thanks for watching. For more in-depth breakdowns of life at the edge of chemistry and biology, stay tuned to Broad Science.